everybody welcome back to the bison workshop i'm bob <clears throat> and in this video we're going to show how i make the knobs for air rifles uh, these are the cocky knobs and it starts its life off in that and we're going to try to get as many of these out of this as we possibly can and I'll show you how I have come up with a way to do that uh, makes things a whole lot easier and less aggravating to turn <laughs> now there are some uh, a lot of steps involved <clears throat> first I divide them then I make the o-ring grooves then I widen the O-ring grooves. Then I cut them, each one off of the rail, and we'll end up with that much left that can be turned into one, but I haven't made a uh, jig yet for it. Um, I need to make a jig out of steel that is smaller than this that has a male thread on it of um, uh, six millimeter I think it's six millimeter uh, by 1.0 thread so these can be turned into one but I have to make the adapter so I can screw it on to the lathe turn the o-ring grooves and then I can make one out of the last piece but these are for to be set aside for a, a um, hard press time <laughs> so to speak <laughs> so each one of these that I do I'll end up with that left so so far, I've got two of these left. So we'll meet you over at the lathe. Don't forget to have your Trump coffee this morning. If you guys notice the burn mark on the bottom of my cup, I left that thing in the shop for about three or four days on the hot plate burner that I have that keeps my coffee hot. And it burnt the bottom of my cup, guys. I'm broken up about it burnt the bottom of it so it goes to show you these here cups are not infallible <laughs> but anyway it still says trump <laughs> let me get the lathe <clears throat> all right so the first thing we're going to do is take out my jig for the um, pieces after i get them done and Forgive the lathe mess, that stuff down in there. Uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to stick that all the way in there. And we're going to put a center mark on that so we can use our live center. So now we're going to pull this out to almost the end. And then we're not going to tighten that all the way. We're going to bring our tailstock up and make sure it's centered first. So now we can tighten this at the same time that we can tighten this and then tighten your tailstock down 
Now we're ready to start turning our pieces. Now what I what I'll do is I'll put the other knob up to it, get my cut off. And then we're going to bring that in. And this is just going to start the first one. And there we have it. So. I can try marking this with a pencil. But I'm never going to have all of them exactly the same. They're not all going to be exactly the same anyway. Because I'm basically working off of an eyeball system. So, um, the first one. And then we'll go and then, and then we'll just uh, keep moving down until we get all of them. And then we'll come back and do the O-ring grooves. So, enjoy the music. Brain surgeon has to leave his lump And the high price model has to stop for a dump But can the size of Canada can't spray away the truth Cause even if they don't admit it, everybody poops Everybody poops Everybody poops Sure things number more than two Death and taxes and everybody poops So now we've got all of our grooves cut. Now we get to now we need to uh, 
go in between each one of those and make those a V groove. Uh, I usually take the, the V grooved bit and go in until it bottoms out on the bottom of these grooves and no further. Uh, I just go in far enough to where it gives a groove because I don't use my cutoff to cut these off. I use the bandsaw to cut these off. So I want a little groove that's in the center so that I know that I can have my blade in the center when I go to cut it. And then all I have to do is just put them in the uh, chuck, face them, turn them over, face them, drill them, tap them, and they're done. So we'll get to doing that. I'll do this off camera because I'm probably running out of battery. So uh, I'll do the grooves. Basically, it's going to be exactly what I just done with the uh, cutoff wheel, except this different blade. That one right there. So, I'll do that off camera, and then we'll come back and show you what we're going to do. Alright, so now we're going to take this and put it in the uh, bandsaw, and we're going to cut all these pieces out. So now what we've done is cut all the pieces, and we've got them all lined up here on the tray ready to go on the lathe and this is basically the best way that i can do a repeatable business and i just took a piece of flashing aluminum flashing and cut me a piece to go in there just to protect the out outer edge because we've got that the way we want it now we just need to work on the end so basically what i'm going to do is rechamfer this corner face it well, face it and then chamfer it, turn it around, face it, chamfer it, drill it, tap it. And that's going to be the process. So I'll do the first one on camera and then the rest of them I'll, I'll do off camera. So first thing we need to do is get our facing tool and well, let's do our chamfering first. As soon as I find my brush, I lose my brush every time I turn around. You gotta keep your tools clean. All right, so now we're just gonna chamfer the edge. So now that we've got it drilled, now we're going to unlock it so that the chuck moves freely. And then we're just going to put our tap up to it and start tapping. Now once I've got it in so far that it's tight, then I'll loosen up the chuck, pull that out. Loosen that up, take it out, put the next piece in to be ready for the next one. And then this one, we'll take over to the vise and finish tapping it. So now, I just got these pieces of flashing just to protect it and then we'll put it in the vise put a little bit of juice on it and then we'll finish tapping it
And I'll just go down until it gets tougher. It means it's bottomed out, like about right there. Then we'll clean it out. Clean all the uh, aluminum off the threads. And then we're going to make one more pass. Just to sharpen the threads up a little bit and make them a little better. Plus we can go another half a thread more. And there we are. We're bottomed out. Usually I can go a half a thread or three quarters of a thread further. And then we'll blow that back out. Take that out. And we have a knob that's ready to go on. All we got to do is put the air rings on it. So now I've got a package of uh, o-rings which I need to get another pack anybody got some extra o-rings just send them on my way so then we got three o-rings that will go on here just like so And then our last one. And we now have a knob ready for you guys. Uh, I'm going to have to do a little more policing here. For some reason, I'm getting a lot of shavings on these. I think I was dealing with a dull blade. We'll straighten that up on the next one. But there you have it. <clears throat> so that's what I got to do to make knobs for the Challenger and, well, anything that's got a uh, six millimeter by, well, it's actually an M6, but six millimeter. Um, 1.03. So, there's one of you, one of you guys are gonna get this. <laughs> anyway, uh, don't forget to like, share, Comment, subscribe, you guys have a good one. Later.